So this is part two of a video series about using map caps in Nomad. So once you've got those map caps and you've made them like we did in the last video, how do you then use them in Nomad and then take them into Procreate and make some cool imagery? So let's dive right in and take a look. So in the last video, we made some mat caps and hopefully you've got those now because I shared them in that video. If you are coming to this video without going to that one, go back to that video and take a look at how to make your own. Um, I will share those mat caps in this, the bottom of this video as well. So look down in the description. You can grab those mat caps if you, you want to dive straight in with this one. So first of all, what we're going to do is let's go over to shading and have a look at those mat caps. And we want to use a combination. I think the two that we made were this one, like a metal looking one. And we've got this one, which is the coppery version of that. So what we want to do now is set up a nice um, uh, uh, camera angle. And then we want to basically take a photograph of each or take a screenshot of each of those in, in the same position. So how do we make sure we do that? So if we're on copper like this, you want to first of all set everything up so that the render is, is, is how you would want it. So with the new 1.33 version of um, Nomad, you've got this tab here, which is the post process. And I've switched a few things on here. So I've got ambient occlusion on, so I get those nice deep shadows. I've got depth of field on, so you can see the bottom of the, down here, you've got the bottom slightly out of focus, which is always quite useful. You've got uh, tone mapping switched on, and that's just made me, um, given me the ability just to tweak the image a little bit with contrast, saturation, and exposure. I'll leave all of these off. I've put a vignette on, which is this nice dark blur around the edges, and that's everything I set on there. So what I do need is to pick a camera angle. So um, I've done this a few times now. So I, I, And to be honest, I would do this by turning my iPad the other way. I turn it into portrait mode from landscape so you get a larger image. But for this exercise, we'll, go, we'll keep it quite small like this. So if that's the view that you like and you want two um, images exactly the same or more now, you can just go into uh, camera and then add a view and what that's done is that's given you um you can in you basically you can keep going if you want you can move it around we're not going to do this but i'll show you and what that allows you to do is snap to those individual views so we're going to use this one which is view one so i can delete the first one and i can delete the second one and all i've got is that so whatever i do wherever i go i've got that lock to go back to and we'll render to that so first of all, I've set up all of the things that I want, so I'm going to render that one. Um, so again, if you've moved it by mistake, just all the way back to camera, and then, oops, I've done add view again, didn't I then? So I don't want that. Um, so camera and view one, like so. So we know that's right, so back to um, project, and then we'll go to export, and we want it as a render. So we want, uh, we don't want transparent background. We don't want the, the GUI or graphic user interface and we'll set it to um, screen size. You could get it, set it to a higher um, setting, whatever you prefer, but I'm quite happy with that. So we'll just export a PNG and then we'll just save it for now. We'll just save it in our photo library. So that's the first one done. So let's go back to MatCap. And we'll change it to our second map cap and then back to this one. So we want export exactly the same as we just did export PNG. And save that one. And basically what we're doing is we're, we're capturing different ones so that we can composite them over each other in um, Procreate. So I'm going to pick a couple more actually. So I've got other things to play with in that. So I'm going to pick a nice um, another type of metal maybe a bit greeny, something like that one. And we'll go to export. Remember, if you've moved it now, you might think you've wasted it, or if I've just noticed actually I've got this thing in here. Um, so I'll actually redo that last bit. 
So all I have to do is go back and re-render those, which I'll do off screen. I've made some really nice metals here, so I'm gonna pick a couple more of these just so that we've got a nice range for when we do the compositing. So we'll do that as a last one. And that'll do. There we go. So let's go over to our other program, which is Procreate. And first of all, we'll bring in the first one. So we'll just bring this one in as a base layer. Now, as I say, you can do it much higher. You can, re you can render it out at, you know, 4K, render it out um, in portrait mode. It's not an ideal solution. It's not like Blender or, or Cinema 4D or Photoshop, oh, sorry, or Maya, where you can set the output resolution to be huge and then make it smaller after you've done the render. So this is a compromise, um, but it's, it, you know, graphically you can get some nice work out of it. Um, if you want to go and do that kind of thing, then you you, you know you, you really should be going into the larger programs like, like Blender. So we've got the first one. So we'll go um, add and we'll go insert photo and we'll bring in the second one, which is the copper look. And we'll do it again, insert photo. Oops, wasn't that one. Hit the wrong button then. And then I want insert photo and we'll bring that greeny one there. So now what you've got is those three layers. And what we're simply going to do is pick the parts of the layers that we want to show through in each one. So I'll bring that one up to the top, which was our, um, uh, I think that was our final render from last week. Let's have a look. I've got that one. Yep, I think that's the one. So we'll have that over the top and we'll then start bleeding through with this one. Now, what you can do is you can duplicate it so you've got spares and you could do something called, you could actually start using um, a mask and you could just mask away um, this top layer, but I quite prefer just to use the delete and I like to use something like um, a, a very, um detailed brush or, or when i say detailed it's got some kind of detail in it to delete with and what i mean by that is charcoals would be a good one and if you look down here one that i do like is this burnt tree and that means as i delete i'm going to be using the brush texture and i'll show you what i mean so i'll do it quite small first of all and i'll take away a lot of detail from the from the face first of all so make sure you're on the right layer like i wasn't and then as you, you, you see me deleting here, what you're doing is you're revealing what's going on underneath. And obviously, we know what's underneath because we made it, um, which is our um, copper patina effect. So now what you should be doing is thinking, right, on, on a, a patina, a, a coppered uh, patina, how does it actually work in the real world? So how much of this aqua look um, would be coming through? You know, is there a p point where, for example, um, erosion would have happened and the green would be coming through more? So are there areas where it's 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 um, going to be really, really showing through and areas where it's, it's not? So what we don't want to do is just go blanket deleting it out because it won't look realistic. And an example of that, of that would be, I've just shown you a couple of examples on screen, but in kind of creases and indents, you'll find that, that, that there's more of this sort of effect. And that's because, again, the erosion happens, the wear happens differently in creases and cracks than it does on flat surfaces like this. And also what you'll find is that you get, over time, you get cracks and scratches. So if you were to go into something like, remember we're, we're still in delete mode, we're in eraser mode here, but go into, say, um, sketching is a good one with a 6B pencil. And then on your edges, if you scratch the edges like this. Now, if you were used to something like um, substance painter and substance designer, then you're probably used to doing this quite automated because they have a lot of brushes built in. 
you know, I, I'm using a, a pre-made charcoal eraser here, so go and make your own. But, you know, grab your own texture, put that into your brush. Um, I, I photograph a lot of real-world textures, and that really makes your work look different because you're actually grabbing different-looking shapes and, you know, things that you've seen in the real world. Go and photograph um, old um, statues like this. And, you know, don't just rely on Google. I know it's difficult in, in the moment um, in the world because we're still heavily in, in COVID lockdowns. We're, we're certainly in the UK in a full lockdown at the minute. Um, but when we can, get out there and grab grab what you can. It certainly makes you better as an artist because you're looking more. Um, on here, don't forget that you would have drips. So there would be some areas where... Um, water over time would have patinaed it more. So look for, I always think about pigeons pooping on the top of a thing. So I always sometimes put a white look at the top up there. Um, I know that's not a particularly nice thing, especially if you're having your breakfast at the moment. Um, and that's that's basically how we would do it. It's 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 not, not that complex now because you've made your um, materials and you've rendered everything out all you're basically now doing is showing and, and, and revealing what you've what you've um, created really um, I'm going to use another brush now so I'm going to try something like um, I'm just finding different textures that are already built into here so maybe artistic and aurora whatever that is and I'm going to go right to the bottom, and I'm going to do quite extreme here. So that's a bit too much. Oh, I did painting, that's why. Um, I missed it there. So I was actually adding a painting brush then rather than a delete brush. Just make sure we're on it. And then at the bottom, we can just go a bit crazy here. Now, if you see the background's not being affected, that's not because we've masked it out or anything. We, we simply, when we rendered it, it, it's still the same background. So it, it hasn't affected it at all. And that's great because it means you don't have to do a mask or a cutout or anything like that. Um, so that's quite useful. Um, let's do these chains completely corroded. That looks nicer. And then bits and splodges of it corroding here. Again, keep changing your opacity so that you don't, you know, you don't get too predictable or too much of the same size. And we'll do maybe down here. He was corroded under his arms a bit more and under his chin. Um, the great thing about this is because you've got two layers and the lighting is already baked into those layers, all you're doing is really just removing, um, uh, you know, one layer of texturing. Um, and it doesn't take long, as you can see, to, to get to, to a, a really nice effect. Now, we bought, we, we got several different layers, if you remember. So you have got this to play with as well, which is, is um, a, another layer. So you could, if you want, go in and um, basically start adding another layer. And you could maybe, for example, you could put that over the top and you could then start removing that. So our big brush, and you can see it would give you a different kind of stain effect because you've already um, deleted that um, layer underneath, um, you're now showing even more through. So what I'd encourage you to do is add three or four different layers and then just start like this by Pick in the bit off each layer and see what you can come up with. Um, use the, the mat caps that we've given you. Um, go to town, really, and you know, pick one of your own models. Pick something that you can work with. Uh, don't just use the basic primitives because it gets quite boring. Um, and so have a go at sculpting something and then try this technique. And then don't just use the, the copper and patina effect. There's lots of real-world effects. You can have stone mixed in with marble you can have um kind of a, a, a slimy effect on top of something that's more like dry soil and stuff like that it's not a full texture in solution so this isn't like doing pbr texturing for for um game or anything like that this is just a great way certainly for 
2D artists who have come to 3D for the first time. This is a great way just to get some effects. And if you're a, you know, a book cover illustrator or a magazine illustrator, or you just need to get really cool illustrations using 3D, this is a fantastic way to start that kind of process. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Please consider giving it a thumbs up as it really helps us get in front of other artists in the community. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell and hit all where you can. And that'll make sure you get notified when we're dropping these videos, which is usually on a Wednesday and a Friday.